All right, week two, episode two, Poppy's Kitchen. We are live with the introductory segment. We are here with two bloggers from the uh, from the KMS blog. We're here with Agent Zero and uh, and Chalky Milk. So yeah, everyone here, you're here with me to embark upon a journey exploring those who uh, illuminate the imagination using the uh, the written word. We're going to explore this uh, this blog that has the KMS community quite scintillated. Um, you know, the press is buzzing, boys. Um, so I'm going to start off with you, Chalky Milk. Um, would you mind telling me a little bit about how the blog got started, um, what what the initial thoughts were? I'm personally a big fan of the blog. I think it's a great idea. I love having you guys writing about, uh, about everything that's going on. But um, how did everything get started? Uh, well, thanks for washing our balls there. I mean, really, it just started off with a dollar and a dream. You know, it was just a couple of us, you know, obviously remaining unnamed, uh, started talking about it. Um, then we reached out to some more people who we thought, you know, might have some additional words that they want to spread to the community, whether, you know, they're already big on Twitter or Discord or at Barstool Sports, who knows. Uh, and just from there, we just were like, yep, let's do this. Uh, obviously, we had the uh, Discord B Tech team, you know, put this all together for us. And it uh, really turned out well. We're working on domain names and everything like that. But, you know, just kind of, uh, hey, we all uh, have the ability to write, some of us more so than others. But let's uh, see where this goes, something that we're missing in this community for sure. So just your classic, uh, you know, think tank, a culmination of some beautiful minds that uh, they came together to uh, – you know, to form something, uh, you know, we might call it. So, so first off, I'd like to ask uh, where, you know, two extinguished uh, gentlemen, such as yourselves, uh, who exercise a command of the English language, online I've ever seen, you know, traversing the literary landscape. Um, where were you guys educated? You know, perhaps uh, Cambridge, Oxford, uh, Le Sarbon, you know, wh where? Well, Asia Zero, you want to take off with this one? Yeah, I mean, I guess I can just go with a pretty serious answer here. I went to Temple University. Um, didn't necessarily major in anything writing related. Um, this is kind of just something I do on the side for fun. And um, I mean, I'm loving it so far. And, uh, you know, I think the blog is awesome. And um, like I said, every, everybody everybody that's doing it seems to be doing a good job so far. I myself don't consider myself a wait, good writer. Wait, 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 wait. Did, did you say Temple University? I did, yes. All right, we're going to move on to Chalky Milk. Uh, Chalky Milk, your, your, your turn. Um, you know, I don't want to give it too much away because there's so few viewers outside the East Coast, but I went to UW, and we'll leave it at that. You can figure out which one. Um, um, fuck, this interview is going to shit. <laughs> I, I was a uh, poli-sci econ guy, just wrote a lot. And, you know, instead of going the Steve Robinson route of just being a drip, I decided uh, – Go work in an industry that actually helps, and then now I'm here blogging and exposing him as a liberal. No, no the help the help is is undeniable. The help is amazing. I um I can't say enough in that regard. So you know, like so you know, whilst uh, you know making your bones uh, before your mantles were adorned in Pulitzers and you know Persian pottery, um, did you master your craft and uh, metamorphosize into the, into the Titanic? Uh, you know, typewriters. Uh, Titanic, ty Titanic typewriting tycoons. You are, you are today. You know, wh where did you, uh, where did you make your bones? I mean, I gotta tell you, it's just been um, since mock trial in high school, and then uh, just writing uh, research papers. You know, starting at midnight that were due at you know twelve thirty p.m. the next day. Uh, just pumping out all those uh, papers really uh, helped me out with that. Kind of had to do like mini blogs in school and stuff like that, and then I really haven't had for probably about three years now, a, um, I guess just an escape from, cause I mean, Twitter to it's in itself is more of, it's more stressful than real life. Some might say, especially, you know, certain people who are getting triggered about the blog recently, but it's just, um, you know, a way for an avenue for us to actually, you know, share what we think and not have to deal with accountability, which is what we care about. All right. So um, another question along the journalistic, uh, you know, kind of lines. How do you uh, how do you find and nurture these uh, these confidential sources that you've been able to accumulate left and right? I'll leave this to the agent, seeing as he's the agent. Otherwise, I can chime in. The confidential sources, as far as what? 
you know, it, the blog is just so rich in in content and character that there's no way you don't have the you know top level sources. Um, you know, maybe Kirk himself, Big Steve, um, definitely not Blind Mike, but maybe Matt Carano. Um, so how do you nurture these these common top sources? How, you know, how have you developed that level of trust? Or are you purely purely writing off of uh, are you using no sources? I mean, I'd be amazed. Oh, uh, as the co-editor, let me just jump in here. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, go ahead. Um, no problem. But, but let me say, uh, we are all out there pounding the pavement day by day. I mean, I do like to say that the streets are actually our office. Um, you know, we're, well said, well we're out said. there. You know, we see Blind Mike, and I know you slandered him a minute ago. I'll just brush by that. But we see Blind Mike sitting out there waiting for his Uber, and we can't help but just go up and swarm him. I mean, I've got three microphones in his fucking face. He can't see him. So he doesn't know, but you know, I mean, between all 15 of us, I think it's 15 of us bloggers now. Yeah. I yep. mean, we must have, oh goodness, between Minifan News, Kirk, Steve, Mike. Uh, I mean, we got TJ Hubbard. Uh, we have the president himself uh, feeding us news. It's, I mean, I would say it's getting to the point that the private thread really isn't private anymore. If you can uh, get where I'm coming from, there. yeah, I totally get where you're coming from. It sounds like Agent Zero was completely bullshitting me. It sounds like you have a arsenal of sources, so I don't appreciate his dishonesty. Nonetheless, we will move on with this uh, with this interview. Um, so, you know, why is the verbally vicious bloke from down under attacking with such ferocity? You know, what is the underlying issue for the vertically unimpressive fellow? Um, you know, you got mentors coming at you, uh, coming at you left and right with, uh, with all kinds of attacks. You know, let me, uh, let me read some of these off for you. Uh, we got, um, quote, has to go massive mistake, unquote, um, quote, disaster has to go, unquote, um, good effort, bad execution, bad idea, one step too far an absolute shaka. Um, what is up with this, uh, this guy Menners from Australia attacking the blog? What, what, what is this problem here? Can I jump right, in so, real quick? Yeah, no, perfect. Perfect. Hey, I was going to pass but, off to you. I mean, my jump in is actually going to be kicking it to you, Chalky, because I <laughs> honestly <laughs> have the same question. Um, cause I don't know who this guy is. I kind of reached out to him oh. and asked him a little bit my answer from him. And his, his answer was Kirk disavowed us. So that was it. That's all I know about him. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, we do know that Menners is undefeated, which I mean, that's just fact, scientifically proven. So we know we can't really can't really argue mm -hmm. that point. Now, what I would say to Menners is, yes, we've been disavowed, but also fuck you. So the <laughs> biggest thing that Kirk really talks about is he doesn't want apathy. This blog has, I mean, maybe for people who don't talk about it, sure they're apathetic towards it right now. But there are people who have chimed in on Twitter and they're like, oh, we actually love this. I had a fucking, I wrote a uh, just a satirical Bruce Springsteen piece just calling out Kirk for appropriating uh, blue collar culture. And I had an actual Bruce Springsteen fan who I assume was, you know, 380 pages deep in Google. I got a quote for you from your article. So since he burst onto the music scene with his 1975 album, Born to Run, Bruce, the boss, Springsteen, has served as a controversial figure. The main argument espoused against Bruce is that his music appropriates blue-collar culture, allowing one percenters like Barstool Sports' Kirk Minahan to feel that they are connected to true America despite never having even mowed a lawn. Bruce is for rich people to feel down to earth. I completely agree. I stand by every single word I said there. I mean... That's really, you know, it's satirical in parts, very truthful in parts. I mean, at the base of every uh, joke lies something in truth or a seed of truth. But really, the funny part to me is that people will write something with their own opinions. And as Kirk has said, he vows it and there's 118 readers. And I think my top blog has 113, but we have some with 260. You know, most of those are just Antoine Leather um, mm -hmm. rereading. But... The funny thing is, if it's really that much of a piece of shit and shouldn't, you know, should go away, and it says that it has no affiliation with Barstool Sports or the Kirk Minahan show, why are you getting so fucking pissed about it? Like, right. obviously, there must be, and at the base of his anger, at the base of MHB's anger, there must be some seed of truth there. Otherwise, they wouldn't be so angry about it. 
So speaking of MHB, I actually have a quote from MHB uh, for this uh, for this piece. So MH MHB also decided to chime in with the uh, with the following. He said, um, it's the worst writing he's seen since he helped his little brother Jay's mayhem with his writing whilst he was attending Lynn Middle School. Um, <laughs> that, that's got to hurt. Oh, definitely. I can't imagine how it feels to be Jay right now. Um, I mean, the, it just ties into what I just said. I mean, the fact that he's actually paying attention to this blog while also just talking shit about it means that he's just actually triggered by it. Um, I hope that he DMs me. Because otherwise, it seems like he's just trying to talk shit to RK, you know, he who shall not be named, um, and texting Kirk about John from Scranton at 12.30 in the morning. If he has a problem with something that's written on the blog, he can contact the blog. He has not done that, to the best of my knowledge. Um, as for the grammar, I will say in the past week, we now have two editors of the blog. They do not have publishing, you know, authority, as in somebody has to submit, like a cunt Marco. Um, and then actually publish it or just not tell somebody that didn't get submitted. But they can go back. They'll check grammar, stuff like that. So if we have somebody like a, uh, a Polly Papers, if we have somebody like a uh, Antoine Leather, uh, Benny Albright, we're going to go back and we're going to heavily edit that. Not for content, just for grammar and spelling so that the message is truly conveyed. Well, I just want to say that uh, MHB is uh, privately educated. He's a poet laureate and he's a literary genius. So I'm definitely going to take his word over yours. Oh, Anyways, yeah. we are going to move on to the uh, the next comments that we have here. Um, so we have a uh, we have a comment. Uh, Would expect better thoughts from one blind advocate after a full bottle of Jameson Deep at three forty five in the morning on Discord. Um, yeah, that's coming from uh, from Barstool Advisor. What do we uh, what do you think about that? From Bristol Advisor. Interesting. Hasn't he doxxed yeah. himself already? Uh, I mean, he's not He's, is, he's not perfect, he one, he's not perfect it, but he has some... Is he the one who tweets Erica K. Nardini? Um, I mean, I, I think I rest my case there. He's, How he's much a, could he's really a, he's a renaissance man. I really don't want you to besmirch B as character, but he is a renaissance man, so I, I do trust his opinions. Uh, um, renaissance of the Jameson, yes. <laughs> Yep. Um, all right. Uh, so one more quote. We have Patrick from the Discord, the president of the Minifans, contrary to BA's uh, mutiny attempt. Not affiliated president. with the blog at all, let me say. Still the president. Um, so yeah, Patrick from the Discord thinks that Dave Cullinane's Mercedes-Benz pitch makes more sense than anything written on this blog. Um, uh, did he? Let me, let me just ask quick. Did he provide any sources? Did he give any... Quotes, did he say, I've read every single blog on here? Or did he read one or two like Menners did and then start bitching about it? No, no, he said he read every every single one like multiple times. Every yeah. single one, really? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. you have this as a source. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay, okay. Oh, that's that's yeah. good to know. Yeah, I mean, I think I put together uh, one or two hard-hitting pieces. I mean, one of them was really an expose into my soul about how I really just want Barstool Sports to notice me. I think Agent Zero is probably the same way. Um, but, I mean, you can't really argue with one's truth. So the fact that he says that is bullshit, I mean, that's just, you know, I'm just going to find his address and murder him. I think that's the only solution here. So the last person that we reached out to for uh, for comment was uh, was Big Rick up in Madawaska. He asked me like four or five times if I was the police, but he eventually admitted that he loves the blog. He does like uh, Goosebum Goosebumps by R.L. Stein uh, better, but he is a fan of the blog. So I want to let you know that Big Rick from Madawaska is a big fan of the blog. Um uh, yeah, just wait one second here. Agent Zero, do you know? Agent Zero, um, just so you know, he's kind of the enigma of the blog. He's a newer guy. This is actually the first time I've spoken to him over voice. Um, do you know who Big Rick is? Is this a... Uh, I literally don't. I, I have zero clue, man. This is All of this is new to me. This is kind of why I love it, too, because I'm just getting all this info as I go, and I'm trying to roll with it and learn as I go. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know who Big Rick is. I'm sorry. Uh, no worries. Um, Big Rick is a captivating character. Um, I'll leave it at that. Master um, of you know, he, uh, another Renaissance man. Another Renaissance man. Mm. I mean, that, that's the best I can put it. Um, Agent Zero, I'm going to let you finish off this segment. What is your favorite story on the blog? The floor is yours. My favorite story on the blog. Well, my favorite story on the blog is... All of my blogs. Um, <laughs> to be totally honest, I don't read much of anybody else's stuff. Yeah, fuck that. Um, 
I know I'm not, you know, a uh, writing genius, but I try my best. And, uh, you know, I just, I mean, my, probably my favorite piece is is the double team blog so far. That's that's the one I think I I hit the most and uh, that I think is the funniest maybe, but maybe that's just me. All right. Well, actually, I'm looking at my, my, my intensive notes I have right here for you. You seem to think that um, that Alex Guerrero created coronavirus. What are you fucking talking about? So that was, um, yeah, yeah, I do. I think Tom Brady had uh, had Alex Guerrero, you know, fix something up in a lab and, and spread it so he didn't have to play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because I'm convinced uh, no one wants to play for that franchise. It's just the, the Bucks, you know? You do realize that he signed a contract with them and he intentionally committed to them, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. But that's, I mean, I think that's classic Tom, just fooling the public, pretending like he wants to do something. And then, you know, behind behind closed doors, something different is happening. The story of his career. Classic Tom. You know, he's... Are he's you, are you breaking that Tom Brady is gay? Um, this right now, behind closed doors? Um, No comment. I don't, I don't No comment. Oh, wow. All right. Agent Zero sounds a lot, actually, like like hang from Barstool. Um, are you a Barstool guy, Agent Zero? Uh, yeah, big time, big time bars. Yeah, do you yep. do you do you do you uh, produce for uh, Pardon My Take? Um, maybe I'm gonna leave that up to the imagination. Maybe, maybe not. All right. Well, I think Franny Lydon has infiltrated our ranks here. Uh, so this is me signing out. I don't want any more of the uh, the famous internet troll known as Franny Lydon. So, anyways, bloggers, thank you so much for coming on here. Um, great work. The fucking blog is awesome. Keep it up, boys. And um, yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks for Peace. having us, Poppy. You too. Thanks, keep it up. Thanks for having Love us. The show. This is obviously a clock tower, as you can see. But this isn't just any clock tower. This is the world's largest mill clock tower. Its magnificent four-sided faces went into operation about 1910. It currently isn't operating as you can tell by the face. But speaking of the face, it's the second largest face in the world, only to Big Ben. And that's really all I have to say about that. I got these gloves recently, and there's really only one thing I wanted to know. Not if they'll fit, obviously. Look, they'll fit. They're stretchy. She'll fit you like a glove, literally. But if they're heat resistant. So, get a little map gas and we'll turn the heat up. And yeah, they seem to be doing a pretty damn good job. I mean, since we can't animal test anymore, we might as well do it on people. And like, yeah, that's map gas. That shit's hot as all hell. But I didn't feel a thing. Burnt the hell out of the glove, but the glove's still intact and I'm good. This, as you can tell, is a dam, but not just any dam. This is the Great Stone Dam. This was completed by Abbott Lawrence and the newly founded Essex Company in 1848. This dam is really what kicked off Abbott Lawrence's social experiment. I mean, come on, the city's named after him, for God's sake. I mean, he knew how to build the dam, I guess. This was the largest dam in the world for a period of time. We'll talk more about that in a second. But you don't know where a coat like this under a bridge like this Man, there is some sketchy stuff going on down here, that's for sure. I mean, it took me two takes to get this footage because this man was one of many who was shooting up down there. All right, all you lovebirds out there, this one is for you. Settle down and enjoy the ride. <laughs> is a train station, the Patricia McGovern train station to be exact. It was finished in 2005 before you'd have to stand on the side of the rail and you'd really feel stupid because really, look at what I'm wearing. Me and my friend, best friends at the time, Timmy and Ryan, we'd walk from the Robert Frost School down these tracks, but one day we almost got hit right on these very tracks, so we don't do it anymore. And I'm not going to lie, this guy's been sitting here for a while, he's kind of sketching me out. I wonder what's going on. And obviously, like, don't clear that. But this is like what I found most intriguing was a doggo bowl. Like, who the fuck leaves a doggo bowl on a fucking train track? Really? Like, that's like not even the craziest shit I saw. As you'll see, and you see really quickly, like... How does that get there? Can somebody, anybody explain that to me? How does half of a computer case and a spray, I understand the spray paint, sure, 
but a computer case, how does that get there and just thrown on the train tracks? What drugs were they smoking? What were they doing? Like, you know there's more to the story, and I want to know. Jay wasn't feeling good one day when we were walking home from school, and so me and Ryan, as essentially his co-host, made sure to walk him home, made sure everything was okay, but it was good. He was just going through a tough time. Man, see that camera back there? Those things are popping up everywhere. It's getting out of control. Watching me, watching you, watching us. But who's watching that, man? How much of a degenerate do you have to be to destroy a bathroom due to vandalism like that? What do you like, making brackets in there or something? I mean, it makes less sense than this piece of art. But no, it was donated by a local mail company. Here's the outside of the train station. You get the police door, community door, usually a cafe door. We have these cool bike rack things and ice cream trucks. Now, that police officer you just saw did come over and question me. Pretty much wanted to see if I was pretty up to trouble and not saving kids. He doesn't know I'm on his side, but I don't have a cool car like that. After a long day of filming and running through the streets, you know, I could have got corona on my shoelaces and I can't save children if I have it on my shoelaces, so I figured this would be the quickest and most efficient way to get my laces off to be replaced. The dam has only needed the plywood flashboards to be replaced since its construction, which is why they made it into a hydroelectronic power plant that pushes out 60.8 megawatts in 1981. But let's go to our montage. Everybody seems to like those. I made it. Oh wait, yeah, it's not Patton, Pennsylvania. Okay, enough of that stupid fucking montage. Melco used to be a great electronics store, by the way. I do have to give a shout out to New Balance for con uh, converting their factories into making masks for the medical industry right now. Which gives, has given me the inspiration to learn how to sew, so I'm indirectly saving other people's children. This guy, he's a professional panhandler. These two, they look like they're, you know, it's a domestic, but I'll explain in a second. What they were doing was shooting up, long story short. And here we have somebody's bodet. Beautiful establishment for rent. Uh, that's a lot of trash. I wonder how many people are living down there. I'm probably going to say two or three easily by that. And what's scary about this is how do you think that got there? And what is it? And who steals a bike and just leaves it like that? This is so much, so much garbage. So much. I mean, at least it's in piles. But uh, it's, it's fucking crazy. Like, There's nothing that makes you feel more comfortable than seeing that at your parks. You know what I mean? Like, prepare to die or walk into a hole like this. And I also got messed up on this shot because this fucking junkie over here uh, needed to shoot up. And it got really strange as he started getting a little more aggressive and kind of making it seem like he was going to block me. And nice uh, spray paint, by the way. And I just got out of there, man. But I go to the other side, one, two, three, they're everywhere. Wear shoes, guys. I was actually going to tell some stories that I legally can't right now, but such as limitations, but a girl was sitting there over here, and guess what she was doing? Boom, shooting up. And I noticed she was shooting up because I come back 20 minutes later, and guess what I find? Well, you'll see in a second, but it was like, come on, you have to find a better place. You couldn't even tell she was doing that, but I knew it. I knew it. 93.7, we cause cancer from Lawrence to Boston. This is the Lawrence part of it. And here we have a three bedroom, two bath with a window that's got a good pricing and a beautiful waterfront view. Here it's not so much, you're kind of exposed to the elements and I wonder if the dude like fell up there, there's a lot to be discussed about that. And this is a lot of shit. But I like this kind of area and I'm either going to go back with like a bio suit obviously because you know, but it looks like a castle, you know what I mean? 
They even are using the trees to hang stuff. That's pretty nifty in that ladder. Total burnt down old castle vibe. But they already gutted the VCR. I was disappointed. But I was able to go on a nice adventure and see all these beautiful sights and sounds. Get a nice sunburn. And this was really good for my mental health. I'm not going to lie. After being cooped up for so long. Um, but then I saw this. And this creeped me out because I know people doing that imagine the balls it takes to climb that and go in there every night man so that kind of set me on my path and then I found the way in but I didn't go in there today because I didn't have climbing gear and shit obviously you, you don't do something like that without climbing gear but they just yeah just pill bottles straight to needle ran right there right there that's how we roll. This I never understand too. We give so much away to homeless people and they take handfuls of it and they just throw it and pile it up. That looks safe to me. I bet it's fucking live. But that, yeah, look at that. That's a, you gearheads, look at that chain. That's a big chain. That's a nice chain. And this is like dug on crack? Yeah, that's, that's how Corona spreads in Lawrence. Just dump our waste. This is a paper mill that uh, me and my dad watched burn down. The city just let it torch. It was it was quite bizarre. They didn't even like try to fight it. They just threw water on the borders, and it really made no sense. But it was a good show. It smoldered for like seven hours, and you saw what that sign said. I got safety glasses, and they let this Merrimack Paper Company burn. And there's just even evidence over a decade later of the original torch. I have no clue what the hell those are. So what I did was what any logical sane person would do was try to get in. Like, why not? There's a group of homeless people over there. I might have given them five cigarettes and five cigarettes get you the access key, essentially. I didn't go too far in this building because I did watch a guy go in when I was walking by and I never saw him come out and I really didn't want to run into him and there, there kind of was somebody yelling like really random things and I think they're trying to freak me out. But like, this is pretty cool. I've never been back back here and it's like kind of my civic duty to make sure there's no children that need to be saved i mean imagine the instagram photos you can take back here you put those filters you get the hell of follows i'm really surprised more junkers haven't you know scrapped this stuff but these are my guys over there here we have a continuous glucose monitor system they're pretty nifty i'm not gonna lie you just like rip the fucking tab open and make sure all your contents are in you gotta make sure everything's in there obviously it's really only the applicator the injector the sensor and then two I'll call pads and a bunch of paperwork nobody ever reads you open it up make sure everything's there you line up the king you can see the big cutout in the top matches in or won't well it won't work it won't depress like that it won't be as depressed as me but you get a nice needle rip it right off your mom like you don't care about her clean up the other side and just Slap that shit on. You're good for two weeks. No finger pricks. Nothing. Trick is to use these band-aids they give us. Because um, they re retain amazing adhesion. Tap it with your sensors. You can use it with your phone. It's NFC. It's good to go. Also, it's time to do the cholesterol injection. And uh, I'll leave the quote in about what she thinks about that. Oh, my God. Oh, my Killed. Not a big fan of parallel parking, but I guess I did it pretty well this time. I was going to go through the process of how to do it, then I realized I'm not a driving instructor, and I, like, don't have any rights or merits to tell somebody how to do it. But it's pretty simple, as you can see. I don't know why everybody makes a big deal out of it. This is the first or second time I've ever paralleled in this car, and I hate it. But, like, you do what you do, straighten out, problem solved. All right, boys, we are live on episode two of Poppy's Kitchen. We've got the round table here. We're happy to have Latino Kirk, Sheldon from North Dakota, Pat and Lawrence. Everybody's here. How's everyone doing this weekend? Amazing. This week? Fantastic. Yeah, yeah hell, hell of a week in, uh, in the Kirk Minahan show. Hell of a week, you know, from the call anniversary, Big Cow calling in. You know, we got the blind mic walkout at the, uh, the end of the week. 
it's been a hell of a week. I mean, with no shortage of action, and uh, that's all we can ask. In, in, in a media cycle where everything is dominated by coronavirus, you know, Kirk is doing what he's got to do to make content for us, and uh, content he made this week. So um, I think we're yeah, I think we're going to start off with uh, you know Kirk doing what he does, lending his personality to all of the YouTube channels. He pretty much came out to every single YouTube show YouTube show that has uh, you know been doing their thing. Came on Mintel Intel, came on Menners, Andy Mayo. I'm sure there's one I'm missing there. Oh, Mike and the Minifans. Mike and um, the Minifans. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'll uh, I'll put it first to uh, to LK. What was your favorite? Um, what was your favorite show that um, that Kirk went on this week? His favorite appearance it might not be the favorite show, but the favorite mm-hmm. appearance you had by Kirk this week on the YouTube channel. What uh, what was it? I think all three that I watched, you know, uh, Mayo's show, Manners, and the Mean Cell guys, I think all had some bits and pieces that were interesting about Kirk. You know, I think the overall one, if I had to rank, Manners was the best, you know, because he's a professional podcaster. You know, I think he, he knew how to interview and conduct, uh, you know, his interview. He, he literally went from end to end, right? Ever since Kirk was born all the way, you know, to... Yep yesterday but i think it was a good uh a good week no i i love that i love hearing about his uh his days in california you know right before he came to eei.com and uh trying to make it as a screenwriter you know his 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 father trying to get a grip on what he was doing it was a it was a really good interview um sheldon and pat lawrence i think you guys definitely caught the uh, the mike and the minifans what do you think of um what do you think of mike and the minifans i mean does does what he does um but to the broader point of the YouTube thing, what I really like about it and going on everyone's show is um, it also gives the ch- opportunity to actually see who, who's got a show. I mean, if you if you like can't survive or uh, the, the Kirk Minahan bump, you you probably don't have good content. You know, if you can't make good content, yeah. Kirk Minahan on your on your show, you're yeah. you're you're fucked. So, yeah, but it was good. It was kind of like Kirk and the mini fans you now the entire week, and it was great. Yeah. Well, I like to see him yeah. with his uh two brothers. That was nice to see. I, I wish yeah. it would have got a little more out of it, but I mean, it's when him and his brothers get together, it's always nice, and then they shit on Mike together. So, <laughs> yeah. so win win, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like Blind Mike, but I will say that Blind Mike show was the weakest uh performance uh featuring Kirk. Um, and I thought the other three guys did a great job. I, I love Mayo asking his uh, his in-depth question in-depth questions. Mintel boys did a great job, and uh, yeah, Menners did a great job of breaking down the kind of times before he became the man that he is uh, that he is today. Um, you know, something that that Kirk really touched upon uh, pretty thoroughly was uh, was the work ethic that kind of made him the uh, the oh, man yeah. he is today. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think the work ethic is a big deal. It's something we've kind of we've heard Kirk kind of talk about a little bit, you know, people have mentioned that they think that blind Mike would be best suited with a, uh, a big cat kind of character, somebody that would be a little more big brother. They love like big cat and, and, uh, and PFT are with, uh, with Hank, Um, you know, but, but Mike did walk out this week. Um, I think this is the perfect show for Mike. If he can make it work here, I don't think he has a future in the industry, um, but you know, what do we think about Mike walking out? He's already on thin ice. He has the two strikes. Um, you know, what do, what do we think about Mike walking out this week? Is it a big deal? Is it not a big deal? Um, well, I'm going to start off with, uh, with you, Sheldon. Kirk yelled at him like 10 times just to fucking leave. And I mean, Mike could have stayed there and fought, but the way the whole show went Friday from him screaming at the beginning, I think if I was Mike, if he, if I was told like 10 times just to fucking leave, I think I would have just left because it could have went either way. And now the way it sounded like. The last, he didn't, the last he was, question he asked was, do you want me to leave? And Kirk answered, we're good. So I think it could have gone either way. I think Kirk was pushing his buttons, but he didn't explicitly say, you know, get to well, the but studio. It, it, he it was, wasn't any, no, we're good. Yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't any different from any other show. Like it was, it was like regular Kirk pushing Mike's buttons. I, I couldn't feel any difference. You know. I think he was more pissed off at Steve than Mike right. or than uh, Kirk. Yeah, but like Pop, I want to go back to your point. Like the the ethic, you know, uh, mentioned during Manners' show. I think it was interesting, not only from a Mike perspective, but overall, right? I think there's a difference between performance and ethic. You know, and when you say, "Oh, I, I think Mike might be better uh, with Big Cat," I think that's a performance. 
you know, a metric. I think ethic and uh, Kirk said something along the line is, uh, is work ethic something you acquire over time? And I don't think it is. I think it, it, you get that in your formative years, you know, and he mentioned his dad being a, a huge role model for, for him. Now, like in my case, my parents were divorced when I was two. Like my mom was my role model. She would work you know, until like late night, you know, to make sure we, we had we had means to an end. You know? So uh, I don't think uh, ethic is something that you acquire over time. I don't know what are you guys' uh, op opinions on that, but Pat, what's your take on that? I mean, I would say like before my dad died a handful of years ago, my worth ethic and like drive and desire just to get things done was way, 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 way lower than it is now. But that's also because I was also not getting treated for you know, depression and whatnot. But um, I, I think like you can learn and pick up little traits and personality things that you might have. Yes, you might have to learn a lot of them young, too. Uh, obviously, if you grow up in shit, well... You're not going to fall far from the apple, right? True, um, but like, yeah, I think you can. You can always, if you're willing. That's the thing. That's the, yeah. It's like it's like a skill. It's like people reach it. Like, you know, they're mid twenties, early thirties, and they just stop learning. It's, it seems a lot of people. It's like no, just keep go out pursuing constant learning. Yeah, but Pat, like you, yeah. you, you touched something interesting, like the personality, right? I think personality plays a huge factor because, oh, 100%. like, I, I, I'm more like an introvert than an extrovert. I'm right in the middle, right? But I'll never be a salesperson. I hate sales. You know, I hate going and talking to people all the time. And so this is personality. It won't change, right? But ethic, I think it's like how you get molded. I agree with you. You may learn something here and there, but like the, the bulk of it, it's your formative years. Yeah, I so think I, you grow up with it yeah. more or less. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think what Pat touched on is that Pat might think that it's a little more situational. You know, the right set of circumstances that's, can kind of get it. Think, yeah, I'm thinking it might have been uh, learning from, you know, watching other people's mistakes more than uh, in my case, actually. So <laughs> not repeating them. With that, with that in mind, right? So I think that Madawaska was kind of the perfect moment for Mike to have had that come to Jesus kind of moment of all right, you know, it's time time to show up or time to uh, you know move on. So Madawaska was a big big moment. Um, you know, I think that was a huge week right after that, catching on, you know, going to therapy, uh, doing whatever. You know, everyone had their own opinion on that. I'm not here to rehash that. But if you were to think about that time frame from from Madawaska to now do you think that blind mike has kind of stepped up to the plate and become the kind of uh, co-host that that kirk expects i'm going to start off with uh with you sheldon i think he's been a lot better since madawaska i mean he still does the whole woe is me thing but that's just his personality and i think he's actually been working a lot harder since then i mean you haven't seen him be shit based on mike and the minute fans and slurring his words the whole time so True. that's an True. improvement um okay let's go to you i think uh his performance on the show definitely got better you know i think uh whenever kirk talks about something mike can follow you know 90 95 percent of the time uh, i think it's the off air stuff you know and i think that's what kirk brought uh, uh on his interview with manners it's like the pro being proactive to do other stuff and coming up with ideas i think that's what frustrates uh kirk and, and kirk mention i think indirectly that he's not the kind of guy that will take you under uh, under his wings and just mentor you know so right. mike needs to to do that on his own that is for sure um pat what's your take on mike's performance from uh, from atahuasca to uh to present day have you seen an, up, an uptick in performance have you yeah How, yeah where are you at the first first i would you know go back to what lk said like that definitely personality uh with mike but but no, yeah, if he wasn't doing what he said he was, was if he was still drinking ale as much, it would all it would be notable. Yeah. And the the trend would probably still have yeah, you know, just kept going downhill. Uh so I agree with all of you. Yeah, he's definitely shown better on the show. And it's just it's gotta step up the extra curricular activities, if you will. Yeah, my issue, whenever I see Kirk doing something, I'm like, wow, like Mike, Mike could have done that first. You know, Mike did not go on all the YouTube shows. There's just a lot of things that Kirk's kind of like Kirk's reached out and done that I'm just like, oh, you know, Mike could have done that. But I also agree, I think Mike has had Mike's definitely stepped it up. I think he's very invested. I think that's why he walked out 
um, on Friday is because he is like so invested and he's like, you know what? I'm fucking doing everything I can here. If that's not enough, you're still going to fuck with me. You know, I'm going to draw a line eventually. So um, I think Mike overall is doing better and um, I'm happy. I'm definitely happy with his, with his, uh, with his situation. I was in Madawaska. I can kind of see how Mike, I'm I'm happy with the situation since then. So um, and so, yeah. I think uh, I think the the walk up was a bigger thing than yeah actually was, especially uh, we were recording this on Sunday, right, the day after Mike and the Mini fans, and right. we watched Mike and the Mini fans, and it wasn't a big deal then. You know, like they they talked about that for five minutes and they moved on. So right. I think there was just like a spur of the moment reaction. Uh, Kirk said that you never walk up, you know, when you're in a radio or something like that, but. Uh, I think, you know, it, it, it generated some good content, you know, like Steven and Kirk making fun of him uh, on how he would be, you know, dealing with that uh, on the curb. So it was funny. All right. So a quick question for everyone. What was your high point of the week? What what was your favorite moment um, on the show overall this whole week? I'm going to point out and say that, uh, you know, Kirk singing and uh, playing the air guitar was my favorite. You know, hearing Kirk start off an episode, just rocking the fuck out. That was a highlight for me. I love seeing yeah. Kirk's energy like that. Makes you you mean day. you I, mean I, masturbating? Did you see the video? It looked like he was masturbating. Hey, it's the you know <laughs> one one of the same one of the same baby. Um, okay, what was your favorite moment this week? Well, aside of the well, my worst moment was the mini cell you no know, mini fan OG fucking war and drama. You know, I hope this is past. Me too. All of us, but uh, I think my favorite um, moment was. I would say, you know, him opening uh, the, the show, like singing and also be being willing to, to go to all the, the shows. You know, it just yeah. shows that he's a, he appreciates the community. He's trying to grow this platform yeah. for sure. It seems like he's very invested in growing the YouTube platform. You know, it helps him. It helps him, you know, in multiple ways. Right. So the, the fans have plenty of content to get through and get them through the day quarantine or whatever if you want to watch a youtube show one night watch it if you don't want to watch it it's not a big deal you're not going to be like missing out on the greater product of the podcast by not watching the youtube shows you miss nothing you gain something you might like you might find a hobby or a niche that you like um and also you know it gives kirk you know just it just kind of adds to everything going on you know he, he's harnessing the skill sets of people out there um which are, we're, we're awesome i mean not to do our own horn but we are awesome fans. We have people out here with insane skill sets. People that are out in North Dakota, you know, working the land. There's people out in Lawrence, you know, with the uh, with whatever the fuck Lawrence has going on. You know, we have amazing fans here, uh, amazing people. Um, so harnessing that and putting it to use, you, you can't you can't go wrong with that. You cannot go wrong with that. And I mean, and I think overall, Kirk is happy, right? I have some quotes here. Like he said, uh, "It wasn't a big deal." And then later, Kirk thinks Mike sucks. And then he asks, should Mike have fought? No. And then he goes and says, Mike is not curious nor a great thinker. He has no questions, no ideas. Uh, Mike gets what Kirk's trying to do and doesn't get in the way. So I think this is a, a, a big point. You know, even though he has a lot of like cons, he has this pro, right? Because he understands his place in the show, uh, in the program. You know, it's like he does whatever kirk's idea is and doesn't you know argue is he good or bad you know he's, maybe he's, a, he's an employee yeah yeah Do what your boss yeah. tells you at the end of the day yeah yeah all right so um like we've all mentioned or you know like we've mentioned before the emphasis for the show is trying to focus on the community right you know there are plenty of shows out there to talk about the show the characters on the show uh you know KMS Rundown does a great job of running the show down. We're not here for that. We're here to focus on, you know, the, the community here. People that you might meet on Twitter, people you might meet on Discord, on YouTube, or wherever, you know. So um, if you're a person out there that, you know, wants to come on, do a skit, do a, do a, uh, a skit, do a segment, do whatever, you know, talk a little bit about what it's like being a minute fan and, and, and doing your thing at wherever you are, um, you're welcome to do that. So I feel very, uh, very happy that we got in touch with uh, with Sheldon. Um, Sheldon is a first rate caller, you know, one of the best callers we got on the uh, on the show right now. So we're very happy to have Sheldon out here. He's actually from North Dakota. It was a pretty unique lifestyle compared to a lot of us city slickers out here in uh, in New England and Boston, whatever. He's a calling uh, machine. He's a he's, he's a calling machine yeah. for sure. The calling savant. He's 
he's got something figured out. Um, so yeah, we got uh, we got shelled on the run down here this week, um, and next week we're gonna have a little bit of uh, an insight into what it's like, you know, being Sheldon from North Dakota. A little footage from uh, from where he lives at, you know, what he what he does uh, for work, um, and a little bit of that magic uh, behind the uh, behind the phone calls. Um, so hope everyone you know gets to uh, enjoy Sheldon next week. You know, this week you got to see Pat and Lawrence doing another. Uh, you know, we're so lucky to have Pat and Lawrence. I, I I'm not gonna go too too, too far down that hole, but uh, the we are. Does we are. It's the most like concentrated infected uh, city in Mass. So. Hey, you know, a good mask. Yep. Without, 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 the sour, you know, without the sour, the sweet ain't as sweet. And uh, Lawrence made Pat, Pat and Lawrence, so we got we yes. got that going. Um, I think we're gonna end off here on a on a fun note. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of thespian talk this week on the show. Um, you know, we, we talked about uh, Denzel Washington. I personally love Denzel Washington. Uh, just ended off on a fun way, on a fun note. Um, I want to ask everyone what their favorite Denzel Washington movie is of all time. Uh, Pat and Lawrence, you uh, you get to go first here. I mean, I would either pick, uh, I think I would ultimately pick Philadelphia because I'm also a huge Tom Hanks guy. But um, that's like right on the fence with the, the tw- uh, you know, torn apart on one of the episodes today, uh, John Q. Which I mean, it was like I was like eleven when it first came out, and I just I liked it then. Uh, but Denzel, yeah, yeah. Those two. great movie, great great choice. Um, Sheldon, let's go with you next. Inside Man. All right, great choice. He was great, choice. He was great as uh, the smart ass investigator, and it was just a great movie. And I know Matthew Crown is going to love Pat Strice. He loves John <laughs> Q. Just ask him. Okay, what do we got? Dude, it, it's so hard. You know, I, I think Denzel is a, such a good actor. It's hard to pick the best. I made a list of five. Fuck it. I mean, you know, you know, order of preference, you know, like I think John Q is good. I think Equalizer is good. Uh, I think Training Day was good. The, the Bone Collector was a good movie. And Remember the Titans, you know, like, oh. like cheap, cheap. yeah, I, th- I think it was, it was a great movie. And I think I mean, most of them follow. It follow a, a, a script, right? He starts weak, and then it just becomes like a rocket, right? And in the beginning, it's very like slow, and then he the the character transforms into this beast, you know, be it the John Q or the Equalizer, you know, or you know Training Day. It's always like slow in the beginning, and then you know, skyrockets. Or the train movie, whatever movie that was. Yeah, taking the ballon. One, two, three, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What I, I mean, Aviator was also awesome. Train, you know, conducting a train, flying a plane. Yeah. Denzel's got it. Yeah, what uh, I did really also like was Roman J. Esquire. Esquire. I thought that was pretty good, too. Yeah. Just because I like boring crap. <laughs> yeah. That one's boring uh, throughout, right? <laughs> but... Yeah. yeah. Like... So I'm going to go I'm gonna go with two. Training Day is my second place. I love Training Day. I just love Denzel when he's in that, like, I remember one line he goes, you got you got yeah, you know, roll your window down, roll your window down. You got you gotta smell the street. You gotta you gotta live that shit. I just love when Denzel get Denzel gets down, dirty and gritty. Um training day was an amazing movie. Um and then number one, it's along that same line, but he doesn't have that same kind of like fate. So Man on Fire would be my favorite movie. I think Man on Fire yeah. is an amazing, amazing role. I love him seeing I, I love watching him just kind of pick somebody that he's gonna protect and going to the end of the fucking world to uh, defend that person and uh you know I tell you it's hard to get is ridiculous. It's it's hard to get one, man. Denzel yeah. is good. Denzel is the man. It's it's that's what makes it weird is that they touched upon on the show. He doesn't have like a standout classic that you're like, holy shit, like this is the you know the magnum opus or the um whatever, but amazing, amazing discography nonetheless. Yep, I agree, one hundred percent. All right, so everyone, tune in. Well, first off, before before I say, let's tune in next week to Sheldon, dummy. We all love you, dummy. Um, yeah, I apologize if I uh, if I told you to delete anything. I just uh, you know people like TJ, people like uh, MHB, and who was the last one who reached out to you? Andy Mayo. Mayo. You know, I don't want to fuck with these people. I, you know, I think they're out there doing their thing. They're doing their YouTube shows. Uh, they're creating content just like us, and just because they don't respond to a dummy calling them out in public, asking them to come on the show, um, doesn't mean we have a problem with you. 
um, dummies out there just trying to create content. And yeah. um, we love can't you wait to have him back. Dummies, the man, chief investigator, you know, does his thing. So anybody that uh, he might have reached out to, we still want to have you. Um, dummies isn't, isn't the only person on this show, but um, yeah. So everyone, tune in next week. Um, we're going to have Sheldon from North Dakota showing you uh, how things go down in North Dakota. We're going to have another, uh, you know, good episode lined up for you. So first first off, big shout out to intern Nick um, filling in, helping us out with this. Oh, yeah. Nick, well, what's you your favorite? Intern, Nick. What's his favorite Denzel movie? You yeah, have Nick, one, Nick? Here. What do you like? He's too young. Uh, I'm probably a remember the Titans guy. Just I grew up with that one, so I'd have. Uh, it's kind of a cliche choice, and he probably had much better roles of acting itself. You know what I mean? But just that one hits close to home, so I gotta go. Remember the Titans. Nick, thank you, brother, for coming on. We re- we really appreciate you uh, helping us produce this week. Um, Will, we love you. We'll see you soon, Will. But um, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, get well, man. For sure. All yeah, right, thanks, Nick. So uh, this is signing out. This is us signing out. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week, boys. See ya. Yep. Yeah.